When you're doing a bent over row, what do you actually feel working? Do you feel your lower back or neck becoming irritated? Or do you feel your biceps fatiguing? Or do you actually feel your upper back and lats powering the pull? All too often because of mobility restrictions and a lack of scapular control, we end up not getting the full benefit of this amazing back exercise. That's why I wanted to share three tips to dial in your bent over row form so you can really target your back and not end up with annoying little aches and pains. But before we discuss this amazing movement, I want to discuss the common mobility restriction that can lead to overload and improper recruitment patterns, a lack of thoracic extension. If we can't properly extend our thoracic spine or the vertebrae from the base of our neck to the end of our rib cage, we're going to seek out mobility from other areas, like our lower back. Not to mention, we may also struggle to properly engage the muscles of our upper back because we lack proper scapular control due to the limited extension of our spine, which may result in neck and shoulder pain as well. And unfortunately, this mobility restriction is all too common because of how much time we spend hunched over our technology. So if you want to get the most out of the bent over row exercise, not to mention basically any pulling movement, while also preventing neck, shoulder, and even lower back aches and pains, you need to work on improving your thoracic extension. One simple and amazing move you can include in your warm up routine is peanut foam rolling. If you don't have a peanut or simple mobility tool, you can place two tennis balls or lacrosse balls in a sock and tie it tight. Place the peanut on the ground and lie over it so a ball is on either side of your spine. Relax back over the peanut, starting with it at the bottom of your rib cage. Breathe as you relax over it and even reach your arms up overhead. Sweep your arms down and out to the sides before crossing them over your chest. Crunch up and repeat. Then move the peanut higher up on your spine. You can repeat this all the way up to the base of your neck. Hold longer or perform a few extra snow angels in any area that's extra tight. This is a great way to improve that thoracic extension so you can better initiate the pull with your back. Now what are three tips to improve your bent over rows? Tip number one, focus on drawing your shoulder blades towards your spine. Too often we focus on pulling the weight towards our chest. And while in a row you do row the weight up towards your chest, too often this can lead to us turning the move into a bicep curl over a back row. Instead of cueing yourself this way, think about initiating the pull by moving your shoulder blades towards your spine as you bend your elbows to row the weight up. If you first think of that pull as that scapular retraction, you'll engage your back to start the pull and your elbow will then bend in response. Because your biceps are working, we just want them assisting over trying to do all of the work. By focusing on our back performing the pull and that scapular movement, we can also avoid exaggerating the row range of motion, which can lead to us shrugging and our neck becoming irritated. If you're so focused on rowing up higher, you may end up simply rounding your shoulder forward in an attempt to make the movement bigger over working your back. So focus on pulling with your back and then stopping the move when you can't retract any further. This will also ultimately protect your neck and shoulder. Tip number two, push your butt back and think wide shoulders over extend your spine. While the extend your spine cue isn't a bad one, when we use it if we can't actually properly extend our thoracic spine to prevent rounding over, we'll end up arching our lower back. This is why we can end up complaining of lower back pain with bent over rows. Our body will seek out mobility from other areas to try and mimic a proper looking movement pattern. So by thinking wide shoulders or wide chest before you even hinge over, you can help cue yourself to not round forward while also avoiding arching your lower back. You may even find this cue helps you slightly engage your upper back to be aware of it before you even row up so that you aren't shrugging as you hinge over. This is key to avoiding irritating your neck. Then as you hinge over, don't simply think about leaning forward. Cue yourself to push your butt back. Even starting out, you may find it helpful to have your butt facing a wall and think about pushing your butt back towards the wall behind you. Because by properly sitting back, we will engage our glutes and hamstrings properly to create a more solid base. This can also help us avoid rounding over or overloading or arching our lower back. So think about standing tall with wide shoulders before you push your butt back. That simple setup tweak can really help engage everything correctly before you even row. Tip number three, regress, regress. Because far too many of us spend far too much time hunched over our technology, it can be very easy to not benefit fully from this move. If you try a variation you can't perform with a proper recruitment pattern, you're going to end up compensating and overusing muscles not meant to carry the load. So if you don't feel your shoulder blades moving and your back actually powering the pull, regress to progress. While I love the barbell bent over row and even the two arm dumbbell bent over row, there are so many ways to modify this move so you can focus on getting the correct muscles working. First, you can start by simply performing a unilateral row instead. 
When you focus on just one side at a time, it can be easier to make sure you're getting the correct muscles working. You also don't have to worry about compensating and using other muscles because your weaker side is trying to keep up with that stronger side during a bilateral row. Second, you can stagger your stance. This can make it easier to protect your lower back as it is less of an intense hip hinge and easier to brace your abs during it. If you really struggle with disengaging your lower back, you can also try a supported bent over row. Place your hand down on that front leg in a staggered stance or even on a bench. If that still doesn't allow you to brace correctly and you still feel your lower back or even your neck, try a chest supported row variation to start. This can help you properly brace so you can focus on your back initiating the pull. The chest supported row also doesn't allow you to get ego in the weights. You won't be able to bounce or use momentum to row the weight up like you can in a bent over row. Because you're pressed into the bench, you have more control and you aren't able to stand up out of the row and turn it into an upright row variation. Whether you're doing the bent over row or any exercise for that matter, you can't just go through the motions. You need to focus on what you actually feel working. If you aren't able to recruit the correct muscles, you need to address those underlying mobility restrictions and then you need to tweak your form and even regress progress to get the maximal benefit from every single movement you include. If you like the video, make sure to like it, comment below if you have any questions, and subscribe, we're posting new videos each week.